It's just impossible to imagine that at some point in time, you don't have disagreements, that you don't have differences or what have you. But what we did was take it, particularly because of Jimmy Garoppolo and Belichick's willingness to move beyond the Tom Brady era, Tom Brady fending that off and going upstairs to Robert Kraft to do it, that somehow, some way, you know what, Bill Belichick to him, obviously we're going to have so much of a problem they couldn't overcome it. I'm not here to tell you they didn't have problems. I'm not here to tell you that Tom Brady didn't get annoyed with Bill Belichick. We heard other players getting annoyed with Bill Belichick being incredibly annoyed when he benched Malcolm Butler for the Super Bowl last year. Tom Brady, along with a bevy of others, spoke out against it, had an issue with it, and said this, you know, they, they indicated that they just did not agree with the coach's decision. But in the end, the resume is so impeccable as it pertains to his stewardship over this franchise from a football uh, football operations perspective that it's simply undeniable. So tomorrow's another day. The sun will shine again, and here we are a year later, and they're back in the Super Bowl. I'm not saying the problems that existed were, uh, um, were non-existent and it was fake. Those were obviously a real, real thing. What I'm saying is, is that at the end of the day, it was overblown because we didn't have enough respect for the relationship that existed between the two, the, I'm sorry, the qualifications and who they are. We didn't have enough respect to recognize that they're above that kind of fray, that somehow, some way, they would prioritize winning and getting the job done above all else, despite the fact that they spent mm -hmm. 18 years, the better part of the last 18 years, showing us that's exactly what they do. That's why it was overblown. What do you think, Max? No, it wasn't overblown. And by the way, I alone can recognize this achievement, apparently, because everyone takes this stuff for granted. You cannot take what they are doing for granted. Well, we've seen it so many times in the past, but every time they do it again, it is remarkable, particularly considering Tom, considering Tom Brady's age, particularly considering what went down. Consider Bill Belichick unsentimental, sober view about everything, views everybody as chess pieces on a board, as commodities, has to value players appropriately, which is why he's so good at turning players and picks into other draft picks and, and managing the salary cap as he puts a winner on the field every single year for almost 20 years, gets to almost like half the Super Bowls, wins most of those. It's amazing. How does he do it? Sober analysis of what's happening. And Tom Brady was always for that. He was always with it, the Patriot way till his number got called. Then what did Tom Brady do? He circumvented the GM, Bill Belichick, undermined him, went right to Robert Kraft, the owner, and stopped Bill Belichick from, from you know, actually enacting his secession plan, which is to groom Jimmy Garoppolo. May Garoppolo, the Garoppolo trade happened, then Belichick wanted to get rid of Gronk. That didn't happen. Now, once that occurs, are we overblowing a rift in the Patriots? No, we're identifying something. And that's why I alone, I feel, right now, at least on this show, can give credit where it's due. Belichick and Brady didn't just pay lip service to the idea that we have a job to do. Because anyone could say that, well, yeah, but they're professionals. You know how hard it is to actually do it? The reason the Patriots have had the success they've had through these years is because they always focus at the job at hand, the team and the game they have to play that week. That's what Belichick and Brady were able to do. After that entire relationship, when it came down to it, Brady undermined his coach and GM, and, the G and he did it because the GM was making plans eventually to get rid of him. And they put all that aside and were able to focus on the job at hand to the point where they made it back to the Super Bowl. We didn't overblow it. If you're saying we overblew it, then this accomplishment isn't as big as it actually is. All right, we got to get Damien in here. What do you think, Damien? Um, I, don't think that, I, don't think we, I don't think we overblew it. I think there, number one, there's credence to what the, the, the original story was. I don't think many people can dispute that. When you've had the amount of success that the Patriots have, people want to take credit. You know, there's a lot of alpha dogs in that building. So, yeah, there were things brewing underneath the surface. But I will say where you got to give the Patriots uh, credit is they're probably the best organization in the National Football League at what I call ignoring the noise. All right, and we can, and I can give you a prime example of the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
Look at all the dysfunction with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where we're talking about Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown and, and Big Ben Roethlisberger. Look at how that organization dealt with everything that was going on with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then compare it to the Patriots. This whole story came out with the Patriots and, and talk about, you know, Garoppolo and, and, the, and Tom Brady going to Robert Kraft and, and circumventing Bill Belichick. For a lot of organizations, they wouldn't be able to handle that. But you got to give credit to that, or to Bill and Tom, to understand that what we have as far as our relationship is a business, not a personal relationship where we're going to go out and, and go get lattes or something like that. We're here for one one thing and one thing only, and that's winning football games. And there's no other organization in the National Football League better at ignoring the noise than the New England Patriots. All right. Listen, well, I just want I, I just want to say, I'm sorry. I just want to say this. What I'm talking about overblowing is that there have been numerous conversations that various folks, pundits, commentators, et cetera, NFL aficionados have had about Jimmy Garoppolo, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and how that situation may have caused the kind of rift we talked about Tom Brady not showing up to, uh, I don't know whether it was OTAs or whatever the case may be. We talked about these kind of things, and we gave the impression, or at least we asked the question, could this derail the New England Patriots from being successful? My argument is, as we sit here today, we marvel at the level of focus that these guys have towards the bottom line, how nothing usurps that obligation. And I'm saying with the Pittsburgh Steelers and others, like mm -hmm. Damian pointed to, they highlight issues that don't exist in the New England Patriots organization. In the end, what it comes down to, everybody's going to be sick to their stomach if they can't get the job done. They're going to right, come together. Right, but that's together. not normal. And so, so if we're talking is, about what, this divide, what Pittsburgh it didn't is, happen. Right, but the point is what happened in Pittsburgh is what you can normally expect. What's happening in New England is extraordinary. We didn't overblow it. It's an extraordinary situation.